In this video, you will learn how to use Festivity Shader and apply it to a model, plus some comparisons to other shaders in the end. Let's go. What do you need? You need Blender 3.1 or above. Data mined models, not MMD models. You'll have to find them. They are usually in FBX files instead of PMX. As for the textures, you'll need Diffuse textures for the hair, face, and the body Shadow ramps for the hair and body Light maps for the hair, face, and body Face shadow texture A metal map And intermediate knowledge of Blender You can start off by downloading Festivity Shader from the link below Once you downloaded the shader, inside there'll be a blend file which we'll be using to append all our materials from First, commit murder Next, import the FBX of the model you downloaded Make sure when importing under armature, select automatic bone orientation If not, your bone directions will be fucked later after importing, press A to select all, then Alt-S to reset the scale. You should now see your model covered in porcupines. In the outliner, go to select the filter, deselect object contents, object children, meshes, and armatures. After that, with your mouse hovering over the outliner, press A to select everything and delete. Your model will now be depressed. You can re-enable the filters just now. After that, rotate the armature or the model to its original upright position. You can get rid of the effect mesh and eye stars. Uh, I usually just use to put them into a uh, unused collection. I mean, who knows, they might come in handy later, I don't know, I never use them. And now we're gonna finally apply the shader. Append these following materials from the shader file that you downloaded. Once you press append, these wonderful things should pop up. Next, select the model, and under materials, change materials to their corresponding materials which you just appended. If the model you're using doesn't already have those textures, You'll have to manually assign the textures to each vertex and face. Good luck. You can probably bring in an MMD model for reference or to date to some sort of data transfer, but I am not an expert on that. Repeat this for the body, face, and the brows. Once you finish doing that, go to the scripting tab at the top of Blender. In the text editor, press open, find the shader files. Next, go under scripts. Import Genshin Import Linear.py. This is a script that makes it easier to import the rest of the materials into your model. After importing, this block of text should show up. You don't need to read it. Just press the play script button a couple times. After that, go to preferences, interface, and make sure developer extras are enabled. If you don't do this, you won't be able to import it. Now make sure all the textures you downloaded for the model, they are all in one folder. Once you've done that, go back to Blender, press F3, type in Genshin, and that should be the first result that shows up. Click it. Navigate to the folder, which you just saved your textures to, and press import. You should be done. Go into render view, and voila. It's all textured. Hmm, yeah, that's a good fucking shader right there. Though if the script doesn't work, you can always forego it and import the materials yourself. Just go look into the shader nodes and try and figure it out. It's easy enough. Of course, remember to set your color management to standard to make it look less bland. So what actually are these empties? Well, the arrow you see, it's basically the light source, right? You use that empty to control where the light hits the model. As you can see, all the shadows correspond according to the light, as well as the face shadows. However, there's still one tiny issue. You'll notice that if you move the head bone, the face shadows don't change according to the rotation of the head. But that's an easy fix. First, select the armature, then make sure in viewport display it's in front. Next, in pose mode, select the head bone. Then press Shift S cursor to select it. The 3D cursor should now be at the base of the head bone. Next, select the empty, press Shift S, Selection to Cursor. This will now move the empty to the 3D cursor. Next, with the empty still selected, go into the constraints. Under Child of Constraint, you'll see it's an empty spot. Select the armature and select the head bone. Now, when you try and rotate the head, the shadows will correspond to the lighting. Perfect. As you can see, it all works well. Ah, this is a good fucking shader. Now for the outlines, there's two methods of going about this. If you have Blender 3.3, you can skip to here. But if you don't have Blender 3.3 Alpha, you can go into the Modifiers tab, add a Solidify modifier, change the thickness to 0.001, or whatever thickness you desire, then drag the offset slider all the way to 1. Disable Fill, under Normals, press Flip. Now go into the Materials tab, and add the Genshin Outline Materials. Make sure it's below the material which you want to add outlines to, by the way. Now go back to the modifiers, and under Materials, set Material Offset to 1. And bam, you should have some outlines. To change the color, go back to the Materials tab, go to the Outlines Material, and there you can change the colors. Now repeat that for every single model and material you want to add outlines to. Now you'll notice an issue where the eyes aren't actually outlined correctly. 
To fix that, select the face, go into edit mode, and select the vertices you don't want to give an outline to. Next in the vertex tab, go and make a new vertex group, and name it something like no line. Then press assign to assign the selected vertices to that vertex group. Now go back to the modifiers tab, under vertex group of the solidify modifier, select the vertex group you just made, and press the invert button on the side of it. And that vertex group will determine where you don't want the outlines to be. You can fine tweak this yourself by going into weight painting mode. Now if you're on Blender 3.3, Festivity has figured out a better way to do it. The fucking mad lad. First you set up your model as usual until the outlines part. Next go to file, append, and find a downloaded shader. In there you should be able to find something called experimental 3.3. Open that folder, then open the blend file inside, then go into node tree, and append Mihoyo outlines. Next select the model, go to the modifiers tab, and add a geometry nodes modifier. In the Geometry Nodes modifier, next to the New button, press that little button and select Mihoyo Outlines. Click the little button next to Vertex Colors, then click the blank space next to it, and type in COL, Col. Next, you'll see that there's Outline Mask and Outline Materials under the modifier. Follow me and input the materials as follows. Repeat this for every single model that you want to add outlines to. Now your model does have outlines. However, if you want to change colors, simply go to any model and add a new material and add the outline material. From there, you can edit the outline material color to however you want. The benefits of using the geometry nodes method, it's less finicky than the solidify modifier, and if you're using a datamines model, you won't have to deal with the issue of such as the eyes or the lips having incorrect thicknesses, which we had to solve by assigning vertex groups earlier. And that's it for the outlines. Now what do I think of this shader? For one, the shader is pretty fucking good. It replicates the Genshin shader pretty fucking well, and doesn't like my computer rock. Currently, there are three shaders on the community that try to emulate the Genshin shader. Here's a quick side-by-side -side comparison between the three of them. The first one is Ben Ayer's shader. The middle one is Festivity's shader. And the third one is Xiao Erling's shader, which I have done a tutorial on before. For my Lumin video, I used Ben Ayer's shader. While for the Beido one, I used the combination of Ben Ayer's and Xiao Erling's shader. Now I'll try to list out the pros and cons of each shader so that you can make your decision on which to use. For Ben Ayer's shader, it's not necessarily the best at replicating Genshin's shader. However, what it does is to make a shader that emulates it, but not perfectly. You can also use this with any model, not just Genshin ones, which the other two shaders can only work on. This shader is suited for you if you want something that kind of looks like Genshin, but it's, you can still creatively control it as much as you want. It has a lot of nodes, and you can figure it out, and you can use it to modify anything you want. Now the cons of this shader is that it costs money, but it's cheap, okay? Support the guy. Dude's awesome. And it also doesn't use fake lights, which can lead to some unfortunate shadows happening, especially in the face area. Next on Festivity Shader, it does a pretty good job of accurately uh, recreating the Genshin Shader. It uses light maps, so it ensures that the shadows are all pretty fucking accurate, especially the face. Holy fuck, I don't have to bother with doing this face shading anymore. Here's a quick animation I made to show off the shader, probably make something more out of it. Now the downside of this shader is that it's not very creatively controllable. It has a lot of nodes, I don't know what most of them do, it's really hard to creatively control it unless you really know what you're doing. So I won't recommend this if you're trying to make something that looks like Genshin, but isn't actually Genshin. But if you want to make Genshin animations, then yeah, this shit's good. Oh, and Festivity Shader can only be used on datamined models, not MMD models, so you have to find a way to get them. Next up is Xiao Ling's Shader. Not get us, this one is also pretty fucking good at replicating Genshin Shader. Xiao Ling's Shader is pretty fucking good. Now the downside is I haven't gotten around to updating the English version for it, so and it's pretty low on my priority. So unless you can read Chinese, then you'll have a tough time figuring out this one. Though you can still use my old tutorial and kind of work around it. Xiao Ling has an 8 play box page which you can go and download every all the models he's done so far, with all the shaders apply for you. It's also pretty creatively controllable, so I'll say that. In conclusion, Ben Ayer's shader has the most creative control. Festivity shader is very accurate, and also lags less on my computer somehow. And Xiao Ling's shader? Just overall a really good shader. That's a bit easier to use than near the setting. So yeah, that's it. I'll put a link to each of those shaders below. I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions, you can contact Festivity. Thank you very much once again to Festivity for providing me with this awesome shader. Personally, I think I'm sticking with this one for now. Now excuse me while I go back to work animating. I don't fucking know. <laughs>